Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane. This video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about the Sega Dreamcast. Back when the Sega Dreamcast came out, I was working for a used video game store, so uh, I had lots of contacts and lots of ability to basically pick one up as fast as possible. And on release day, I had already pre-ordered and fully paid for it ahead of time. I was big into the Dreamcast. I was, you know, really looking forward to what Sega was going to offer us. And I was just, you know, just super excited about the whole project. I was willing and ready just to see uh, what Sega's big competitive next console was going to be after the Sega Saturn. Uh, with all of that said, uh, let's just get on to some of my favorite games. Uh, again, these are not uh, presented in any particular order. These are just some of my favorites that I personally chose out of my own collection. Um, I know that there are some games that are on other people's list, but um, you know, I'm, I'm just picking out some of my favorites of what I own. So. Uh, one of the ones is Air Force Delta, released 1999 by Konami. This game was awesome, and it's not much of a simulator, more arcade style than anything, but the way that you could lock on, the throttle up, the throttle down, flying through mountains, yeah, I mean, it, the, the game was completely awesome. The F-22 was like one of the most overpowered planes in that in that game. It, you know, it's just one of those games where you felt great playing. Uh, next one, Grandia 2. Again, yes, I know, I'm a huge Grandia fan. Uh, it's a great storyline. I'm I'm very excited that Grandia 2 even came out. Uh, I thought that it was just going to flop after being on the PlayStation 1 and being, you know, pretty much ignored. But it was released uh, in uh, 2000 by Game Arts. Again, I could wax on for hours about this game, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave you guys with some more, uh, you know, footage of this game, and I'm going to just go on to the next one. Hopefully I'll do an in-depth review of Grandia 2 on the Dreamcast uh, sometime soon. Um, next is an import game that I actually spent quite a bit of money to import it because I imported it the year that it came out. And that's Guilt Gear X, released uh, on in 2000 by Arc Systems. Uh, was it Arcs? Arc System Works. Sorry about that. Again, couldn't read my notes. Um, but it's just, uh, I love the Guilty Gear series. Um, you know, the, the first Guilty Gear on the PlayStation was very good and innovative, had lots of good hard hitting music. And Guilty Gear X just took it to the next level. It was a wonderful game, great music, loved the characters, loved all of the improvements that they made. Um, you know, if, if you get your hands on Guilty Gear X, no matter which version you get, uh, definitely try it. Uh, next is Gundam Side Story 0079, released 1999 by Bandai. Um, now this isn't like your typical Gundam game where it's action based or over the shoulder or anything like that. It was, it was mainly first person and, uh, you know, more of a simulator than an arcade, but I feel that they did a really excellent job. It felt like you were piloting what you were piloting. You weren't piloting like, you know, one of the new Gundams or anything like that. You were piloting, you know, a, you were piloting a mech that basically had an advantage, a mobile suit that had a, an advantage over normal mobile suits. But again, you know, it's just more of a simulator than anything else, but I, I feel that Bandai hit it out of the park. I'm really kind of sad that this, that this kind of series didn't really take off that well around here. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, the next is Psychic Force 2012 by Taito in 1998. Uh, this game 
actually played the original again on the PlayStation and really enjoyed it and was afraid that, you know, that it wasn't going to get a sequel, but Sega put up and let it release on their system and, you know, again, it's just a really good, you know, 3D style shooter where it's more um, three-dimensional because you're flying and, um, but, you know, you don't get to, to move in, in and out as in depth. It's more, you know, it's still a 2D plane, but you're flying. And, you know, I spent hours playing this game. And it's definitely worth your time. It shouldn't be that expensive. Uh, moving on to one of the more comical games that I've played, which is Samba de Amigo, released 1999 by Sonic Team. Um, you know, growing up in high school and all that other stuff, uh, I actually joined the drum line and got into percussion. And so it follows that I picked up Samba de Amigo when it came out. You know, I was I was into the Sega Dreamcast, I was into percussion, and I was into just picking up odd games that everyone else ignored. And people ignored Samba de Amigo because of the price tag. Uh, I remember picking it up at EB Games for like I think. Uh, 150 maybe 180 dollars which was really really high for a Sega Dreamcast game but you know I, I played it me and my friends played it we we laughed at each other while we were standing on the mat and shaking the maracas and stuff and doing the poses and everything and it was just a fun party game for us to laugh at ourselves and laugh at each other Next is Virtual On, released 1998 by Sega. Now, the reason this is on my list is, again, the crazy controller. Um, you know, the dual stick Virtual On controller is hard to come by. Um, and I actually do not own the Dreamcast controller. I actually own the Sega Saturn controller. But I got one of the converters to convert it from... Saturn to Dreamcast, and you know it worked perfectly. I I hope that one day that I can afford to pick up a second Sega Saturn virtual on controller again with the converter. I do not plan on purchasing the Dreamcast one because I would actually like to play uh, two-player action on the Saturn and the Dreamcast, and it's going to save me a little bit of space if I purchase it that way. But again. You know, uh, Sega knocked it out of the park. It's an arena-style mech combat game, and they did a wonderful job with this. Well, that's it for this episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host, Monday, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.